Hello, today we're going to discuss how to read an analog meter. My name is David Robinson. I'm an associate professor here at Los Angeles Trade Technical College. Today we live in a digital age and people always wonder why do I need to read an analog meter when I can have a digital meter? Well, there are some things that an analog meter can do that a digital meter can't and we'll demonstrate that as we go through the lesson. First thing with our meter is we got to plug in our test leads. Your red test lead goes into the positive jack and your black test lead goes into your negative jack. We're going to discuss how to read this scale. We're going to talk about how to read an ohmic value, how to read AC volts and DC volts. So let's first talk about the dials on the meter itself. This is what we call the selector switch. I can select DC positive, DC negative, or AC. Well, you may ask, how come there isn't an AC positive or negative? Well, that's because AC is alternating current and DC is not. Why do we have a DC positive and negative? Well, we set up our meter to read a, a DC value with DC positive. But let's say your leads are tucked down low where you can't get to them easily enough and you realize that your polarity is wrong. To change that, you just go to DC negative and it switches the polarity without you having to change the leads. Now let's talk about reading the ohmic value. If you look at the scale here, the very top scale is your ohms. Zero ohms here, which means there's no resistance. And when you come over to here, to infinity ohms, which would be, for example, when I have the test leads open. The first thing we have to do, though, before we can read an ohmic value, we will set our meter on DC, negative or positive, it doesn't matter for this situation. Then we'll take our range switch, bring it over to the highest range, R times 10,000, R being resistance. And then we'd put our test leads together. Now the needle is going to fluctuate somewhere in here. What we want to do is we want to zero this out. So we have our zero ohm dial here and you want to bring it down until it zeroes right to there. And that way you've zeroed out your meter. Why do I have to zero out a meter? Well, if I want to get an accurate resistance reading, I have to calibrate it. The reason I have to calibrate the meter is because there's a battery in there. And as the battery weakens, it's going to change the values that it reads. So now once we've got our meter zeroed out, we can pick a range scale to go on depending on what we think that ohmic value is. We have R times 1. So if I came up to here and I'm on the 10, that would be 10 ohms when I'm on R times 1. If I was R times 100, that would be 1,000 ohms. And if I was R times 10,000, that would be 100,000 ohms. So this is how you read it from right to left on the top. When you want to read a voltage, if you don't know the voltage, always select the highest scale. But if you know your, uh, your voltage, select the appropriate scale. For example, let's say I was going to work on 120 volts. I would select the 250 volt scale, put it on my AC, because that's what we're going to read first. And that is this scale right here, the red one that's reading this way. And the numbers up here is the 250 volt scale. So if I came across to, let's say, this point right here, I'm on the 250 volt scale, so that's 125 volts. If I was on the 50 volt scale, I'd be reading this here, that'd be 25 volts. And if I was on the 10 volt scale, <clears throat> I would be reading down here, that would be 4 5 volts, so 5 volts total. So that's how you read the AC scale here. You'll notice that the DC scale is slightly off 
from the AC scale. So you don't want to read up here, you want to read on the red scale for AC.